Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato. Dave Honorado. So today we're going to continue to talk about some of the other guitars that I play that you've seen me play in my videos. And Dave's going to, since he's set all of them up <laughs> and taken care of them over the years, he's going to tell what, he's going to actually explain to me what he did to them. Yes, I'm going to tell him what he owns. <laughs> so this particular guitar, this black it's actually a, it's actually a classic, a 1960 yeah. classic, even though it says standard on it. Yeah, this is a guitar I've had for a long time. I don't know, uh, Man. early 2000s. Yeah, I was going to say because like it's um, it's a 90 uh, 2005. Yeah, so, so I've had so I had a um, I used to have a black standard. Then I got this classic here. I use this forever on many, many records and everything. And eventually, yep. the frets wore out on it, and Dave refretted it. So let's, why don't you take it from there, Dave, and talk about the pickups and things like that. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Because we, so, we always change everything on all these things. <laughs> well, and this, you know, this one came with the, I forgot what it was, a 489 or 498 uh, model ceramic humbucker. So yeah. they were hot anyways. But... Um, so, which are actually good pickups for they have good mids for metal and stuff like that. If you want, yeah. I, I output pickups, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, basically, as Rick said, he wore the frets out of it. Um, so uh, wait, oh, hold on, I got to tell this story. So, I give Dave the guitar for some other thing to take care of, and then it comes back and he changed the pickups out. Well, and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> you always bring this story up, but I, I always laugh because it's um. The original pickups were fine, but they were just kind of anemic sounding to me. Right. I remember cranking the guitar up after I'd done the work on it. And I'm like, this guitar could sound better, you know. And so I just was like, all right, well, screw it. I got some pickups. He just that... changed them out. Yeah, I had, I had. He some... didn't say, any, say anything. <laughs> I don't even know if I noticed it first till I played. I was like, man, this guitar sounds great. Yeah, you did. You did. Dave, it was so funny because I Dave's remember... like, I changed the pickups out. <laughs> like, he didn't even know. The best part, they went from black to being double cream color, and he didn't even notice. I didn't notice. <laughs> So I remember that being but I was like, that was fun. I, was, I don't know what she did, but the but the guitar sounds great. He's yeah, like, yeah. I've changed the pickups. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember it because and he was like, "Man, these sound great." I'm like, "They should. They're new pickups." Anyways, but so um so yeah so I refretted it with um, 6100 fret wire, which is like the big tall fret wire, um, and I put a set of Grovers on it for him because uh, he detuned. Long time ago though. Yeah, this was this was actually the first thing he did was I did the Grovers first. Um, put a real bone nut on it, refretted it, uh, put um, some MCI um, sort of medium hot PAFs basically. Um, this one's like an 8-4K, this one's like 7-7. Seven, seven. Um, replaced the vine pots with better pots, had some match CTS, um, put orange bumble, uh, the bumblebee caps in this one, I'm sorry. Talk about the ugly fret markers. <laughs> Everybody gonna talk about the ugly fret markers. Why do they turn green, Dave? Well, they don't turn green. They actually made these that color. So okay. um, in the early 2000s. On do you know that people have uh, say in the comments they want you to change them out? Some people hate them, some people like them. I, to me, on a black guitar, it doesn't. It doesn't, doesn't bother, bother me. That's why I've never done anything about right. it. I never um, noticed it. And I, remember, I never noticed it until, until I started making videos on YouTube, <laughs> and people were like, "What's up with that guitar? It's got really ugly fret markers." Well, and you know, it, I don't know. I mean, I think they look. I think aged, they look cool. You know, they do. And it kind of gives it its own look. And, and but anyways, but so I remember when I was refretting it, there was a bunch of comments. Oh, make sure you get Rick to replace those inlays when you're refretting the guitar. And I'm Is like, that even a thing? Do you even replace? Yeah, inlays? you can. It's it's. I mean, you know, I guess if you really wanted to, I could have. But I don't know. It was fine. So I like leave good enough alone. Um, the one thing that did change the guitar quite a bit was uh, the all the cream parts. I kind of went. This is this is my my little inside thing for this guitar was I wanted to kind of make it look like uh, Al Demiola's um, guitar on on Elegant Gypsy because he had the black custom with all the cream parts and yeah, Ace really had the same thing in the seventies. I just like that. Look. Okay, so talk about the talk about the tone. Turn on the guitar yeah. for a minute here, Dave. Yeah, talk yeah. about the the what, kind of what some of the things that you, you that you did on that. Um, well, the pickups. Um, I didn't want to go super hot with them. I just want them kind of medium range because he's got so many amps that have a lot of gain in them, and we got he's got enough pedals you know, to, for days to, to boost anything. So I just wanted, as the, the stock kind of sound, just to be a really good, tight, uh, Les Paul. And then you clean it up. So recording-wise, you can get a lot out of just that yep. one pickup. Um, and then in the middle, it's just wired uh, normal. I didn't wire it out of phase, so it's like... <laughs> So it gets kind of that funky thing, and then you can back out of the neck pickup and get like a more of a kind of rock. 
Right, right, yeah, the single line stuff on this guitar is great because you can, like, the <laughs> So it has a lot of tones just right there. You don't have to really do a whole lot. And, and then, then the, the neck pickup's classic, like, 59. <laughs> Right now, those are definitely not eights on there, though, are they? I think there's a nines. Uh, these are nines on this one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have done eights on this, but it was a little too slanky. Yeah. So I played this guitar on, on, on many, many records and stuff. Yeah. That was oh, a, God, that, that was an old, old standard and everything. Although I haven't played it that much on my channel lately. One of the reasons was Dave had it for so long. Oh, I'm almost done with it. And I'm just kidding. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about this, Dave. So this is my telly that, that you actually don't see that often. Yeah. But this guitar is actually the one I played most on records, I would say. I love this telly. Yeah. Dave. This is one of the oldest guitars you have. Right? Yes. This guitar um, I've had in my old band, Billionaire. Although yeah. I, didn't, I didn't really play it much. I played. I was a Les Paul guy. But I would use it in the studio all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, and this has had the least amount of work done on it. Yeah. Uh, the only like thing I've done was and stuff. Uh, re planed it and re-crowned it a few times. Uh did the nut on it, just cleaned it up and rounded it and made it really kind of where it's not catching or anything. Other than that, it is bone stock. Um, to me, it's one of my most beautiful guitars, I think. And I can't remember... Oh, no, there's one thing you did on this. I, I dropped it and I got a <laughs> cut in the neck, in the back of the neck yes, that I you did, fixed. I did remember the chips. That. Yeah, and it's like, I can't even find it now because I did such a great job. Oh, yeah, it was up in here. Yes. There it is. There it is, yeah. And um, I dropped, filled some lacquer into it. Yeah, I, I said, Dave, I, I dropped my guitar yeah, or something yeah. fell on it and chipped it. Yeah. And it's really, notice it on the back of the neck. Can you fix yeah. this? He's like, yeah, no problem. And I can't even find it. <laughs> and uh, this one's a 96, totally stock. Um, you know, I mean, just right off the wall. You, yep. I mean, you bought this brand new. Or did you buy it used? I can't remember. I can't remember. I've, okay. uh, I have no idea, actually. Uh, but either way, it's just straight it's a up. a long time ago. Nothing changed. Electronics are totally stock. Um, <laughs> Typical telly, but a great one. I remember using this on a Crowfield record. Right. And um, I remember we had a couple of strats, which you don't have anymore, but uh, I remember we were trying to get, uh, we are kind of going for like a Stax MG, Booker T and MG yeah. kind of thing. We used a magnetone amp on that, I think. Yes, used the magnetone. Like a 50s magnetone. Yeah. Even though I have the reissue, which are great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you had the real one. And um, I remember going through a bunch of strats going like, man, none of these sound right. And um, I was like, man, let me try the telly with the neck position. And I mean, this this actually sounded better than the strats. So I it remember did. going like, wow, that's actually got a really good neck pickup. Yeah. So, um, which typically these are not maybe the greatest, but uh, this one's got this it. Is a, this is a great guitar. Really cool. <laughs> has that kind of it's almost a strap but it's not you know everybody thinks i'm a gibson guy but i've always owned fenders too so yeah no man this is i mean you've got a lot of fenders though i have a lot of fenders yeah. i do I mean, seriously So yeah, it's a great guitar, man. Just you know, this is just one of those things. Like every once in a while, you get one right off the rack, and it's great. And we love that. <laughs> okay, so the next two guitars. This is my Dan Electro from what year, Dave? Uh, that's like mid '90s, so like '94, '95. I've had this. This is one of my oldest guitars that I have. Uh, people that see me play on Instagram, if you don't follow me on Instagram, follow me at Rick Beata One. Beautiful clean tone to it uh, that I use for playing jazz, and it's just anytime I want a good clean sound. 
anytime I want to get a play any type of complex chords with any real dissonances in them, I use them because the lipstick pickups just sound great with that. Yeah, they're real low output, and the definition is really good in them. And um, they have their own thing. It's like you know, they're not. You know, they kind of sound like sort of a Fender, but they kind of don't. You know? Right. So they have their, their own thing. I, I love them for um, open tuning stuff, too. They sound really good for open tunings. Yeah, it's... um. I'll play with distortion, too. On oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah, totally. But I just... And this guitar is totally stock. Nothing's been done to this guitar. Now, it doesn't have a truss rod in it, <laughs> right. right? So anytime Dave has to do, yeah. fix it, it's, he's got to take the guitar neck off. Well, it's it's I kind mean, of, right? yeah, I mean, it's kind of like you really can't do anything as far as adjustment, as far as the neck. So it's all at the bridge. Um, and I mean, the action on this one, it isn't super, super low. It's got some... No, this is actually high. really, I'm struggling to play this. I, I think it needs to be adjusted, actually, now. Probably, but yeah. I can't adjust it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but the bridge, uh, you can't adjust, the, obviously, the bridge saddles, but the neck, it doesn't have a truss rod. It just has a, a metal rod, but it's not adjustable. Later on in the late 90s, early 2000s, they put an adjustable truss rod in them, and the new ones have adjustable truss rods. So... Um, but it's all stock. I mean, it's just uh, that guitar new was like two ninety nine. It was super inexpensive. And, you know, Masonite body. You know. Um, I don't even know if I paid two. I think I paid like one hundred and fifty bucks for it. Then, boy, that was something money not possible. Well <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's a great guitar. They're they're fun. I think everybody should have a Dano in their arsenal. Honestly, so. Okay, this is my Gibson. Red special, I guess you'd call it, but it's a uh, um, it's a stock. Yes, a 1963, I think, uh, reissue. 62, 63 SG special with uh, with P90s on it. Love the guitar, wraparound tailpiece, um, completely stock. Haven't done anything to this one, um, and they Gibson really nailed this guitar as far as being accurate. I've owned a lot of originals of these. Neck is definitely right on as far as the 111 16th width. Um, and it's great. The ra I always love the wraparound tail pieces personally. I think they sound the best of, of the bridge combinations. But um, and it just does the P90 thing great. <laughs> That's great for lead playing too because it's yeah. really even. <laughs> Again, this one cleans up really well when you back it off. Yeah. Real jangly. So, if you're in the market for a Gibson, I w this is one that I really, you know, re yeah. recommend. This is, you know. They're super lightweight. Um, and like I said, as far as um, being accurate to the original guitar, this is pretty dead on. I mean, they're really getting them good now so um i'd say in the last two or three years uh they've come even further than they were so um and this is all solid mahogany one piece neck one piece body and um and for what they are you can pretty much god i mean they cover so it's much a, ground I it's mean, really versatile it plays really in tune yeah it has yeah. it see to me it has a little bit wider neck than normal than than uh maybe it it's just the sgs that have a wider neck than this series one does yeah, yeah. this is the 62 neck it's, yeah it's, and yeah. it's it's uh it's great for playing more complex chords and things like that and uh it really tunes well. Yeah, and this is, uh, I mean, you know, there's a reason why Omi and uh, Townsend used these for so many years, <laughs> among many others. So, um, yeah, I, I highly recommend these guitars. They're, they're great. Okay, up next we got my 335 here and the key, my Kiesel. Dave, let's talk about yeah. the Kiesel first. Um, yeah, this was um, one that uh, I remember, I think you went to a NAMM. And, yeah. and saw one of these and 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 uh, I love painted guitars. Everybody's yeah. like, oh, you know, uh, we have, you know, everybody's talking about the tops on guitars and everything. It's yeah. like, no, I, I like painted guitars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is uh, this is a great guitar. This is um, I, for the life of me, I can't remember the model name of this guitar. <laughs> it sounds great. <laughs> Sorry, Keith. I love I love the uh, I love the pickups on this guitar. Yeah, and it plays really well. Yeah, the pickups are great. They um, they're just the stock PAF uh, Kiesel PAFs, uh, not super high output, kind of medium. Um, and the one thing I, I I do love about the Kiesel stuff and the earlier Carvin stuff, which they 
started You've originally. You've always been a fan of the current yeah, stuff. Yeah, their fretwork is great. They always play really well. I mean, this guitar um, set up to be, I mean, literally the action is like on the fingerboard of this guitar. Yeah. <laughs> you really couldn't get any lower. Yeah. Um, he does have eights on this guitar. We Originally it had tens, and then we, we went to the eights. Um, locking gears, and um, but just a real straight ahead guitar. Nothing, nothing super it fancy, um, but it does everything really well. Now, is those stainless steel, those nickel frets, right? Uh, these are stainless. They're stainless, okay. Yeah, yeah. Kiesel does the stainless on these. Yeah. Um, and graphite nut. And then the tremolo, which you don't have a lot of tremolos on your guitars. This no. is typically like one of, this and the PRS stuff. Yeah, so ones. when I need a tremolo on a video, this is, that's one of the ones that yeah. I will, that I will, uh, that I will play. But this is a great, great sounding guitar. I mean. <laughs> Let loose on me a little bit. Um, and it's the thing I like about it, they really clean up well. That sounds great. Real stratty. And it's, I mean, yeah. it's full humbucker. I don't have it. It's amazing. It really. I don't have it. There, there's a coil tap in it, but I'm not using the coil tap. So. Yeah. Why is it? Why why does it sound like that, David? Is it the position of the pickup? Um. Well, it's just the way it's wound for one, and how they this. I think this is their standard PAF, so it's just very straight ahead. Yeah. Um. I, just, I like it in the neck position a lot because it is straight. It's very different than any of my humbucker guitars. Yeah, it's it, it really does the... Like, you can tap it. Definitely yeah. has to... I mean, it's, it's a Strat. I mean, it's really Strat. Yeah. You know, but it plays like a Gibson, which is cool. Or yeah. Or that style guitar. <laughs> So it's cool, and there's a push-pull uh, cold tap on the tone. Cool axe. It's really, really get a lot of varied sounds. Super like versatile, that. and um, if you ha if you don't know about the Kiesel stuff, I highly recommend them. Check them out. They're a really great company, and um, really make great stuff. Okay, so yeah. this is, um, what, what year reissue is this, Dave? This one is like uh, 2019. Seven, but, but it's but it's no, a uh, sorry. Uh, what, what is it? Um, 2018. What is the uh, what is the, what this is, is a 59.neck reissue? Um, what's the finish though? The finish is kind of cool. This is actually Argentine gray. That's what he, yeah. And it's um, it's basically just devoid of red in the burst, but it kind of gives it a gray look to it a little bit in some lights. Um, and this was an original color that Gibson made in late uh, like mid 59 to like 60. 61 they're extremely rare original you know there's like i would say probably god maybe 20 or 30 of the originals in that color they're super rare um but the cool thing about this was when he got this guitar he didn't know it was that color when he opened the guitar the case up i looked at it and goes I'm like man that looks like argentine gray and i'm like look at him like it is argentine gray and then we looked it up and they're like no it is argentine gray so i was like wow i didn't even know they were reissuing the color actually so i don't know if this was a one-off or one they did in a small series or, or whatnot but uh great guitar really cool this is for him this is surprising this got this has a ball bat neck on it this is total 50 i'm 59. always one that says i don't like these baseball bat necks on it but that's actually <laughs> not true it, it all depends on how they play because my yeah. gold top 56 gold top plays amazingly well, and that's got a baseball bat. That's neck. true. That's, that's a true, total yeah. Louisville slugger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you, you've got a couple, so I, I got to give you that, man. So, um, but no, this and this one's totally stock. Haven't done anything to it. Uh, it's got um, burst bucker pickups in it. I did pop in the look to see those. There were burst buckers two and three. Um, the rest like, of it I is like stock. the burst buckers on that. Yeah, yeah. This is. I mean, totally does all the the 335 stuff um, as you'd expect. <laughs> Really responsive too. Like you can just, you can really feel it ring. It's a great, it's a great guitar. Totally BB King and all that stuff. Um, thing I like about these two is um, I've owned a lot of original uh, '50s and '60s uh, 335s, and here again, like his SG, they really got it right. It feels like a real one. It looks really, really close. Um, 
you know, they just did it right. And they, this one does have the weather checking and relic work, which a lot of his guitars didn't have. So it's kind of has, you only have a couple, I think, like that. I do, yeah. I'm not, um, I'm not one into, you know. I mean, I, it's not, you know. that, not that I mind them. Most of my guitars look like they're relic I've done. done <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. I've done myself. <laughs> right, right, yeah. So this one, but this, I like this one because it's realistic wear. It doesn't look like somebody purposely took a file to it and just, like, made it, you know, really beat up. But um, great guitar. And I, here, again, I totally... We'd suggest one of these if you were looking for a really good 335. The yeah. new ones are really, really decent, and um, it's a great axe. And I really love, like I said, I really like because this finish was really kind of an oddball finish for this. It's um, unfortunately the camera; it's not quite as gray. But it, if you see it in person here, yeah. it looks a little more gray. But I'll call it graded so, after. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> okay, next we have my Univox High Flyer. This is a mid 70s. I'd say what is it? 76, 75. 75? Yep. Now these are secret weapon guitars I, to me. The uh, the pickups on here sound phenomenal, especially for heavy music, and they have incredible clarity. I mean that is just so it rings acoustically yeah. amazingly well. Any type of chord voicings that you that you play on it are just. this guitar it's a great guitar you mix with another guitar in the mix it really it really helps um, and the wraparound tailpiece gives it a lot of sus more sustain the bodies are actually plywood so it's not it's not like a you know some fabulous wood it's plywood this is something that that uh, do, you can find them pretty easily yeah they're around um, obviously Cobain boosted the popularity of them quite a bit because he had one for a while yeah um, but they are great guitars if you can find one they're not super expensive i mean i think they're typically under a thousand dollars for something even less you know if you can find one but um yeah i i really like this guitar i haven't used it much but uh uh, in videos, but I'm going to start using it some more. No, it's a great axe, and they're, uh, like you said, they're a sleeper, you know, that's one of those guitars most people just pass over, but it's a great guitar. Okay, so, next we have... This one is the 1990 uh, White Les Paul Custom, yep. and... I looked for a long time for a White Custom. Yeah. I got one, for a 74, and it came in the neck, the headstock was broken off. Yeah, UPS uh, unfortunately broke the headstock. I think off. that, the, honestly, the guy that sold it to me, it was broken, anyways... Oh, I don't know. So I looked around for a long time. Dave, explain yeah. about the about the customs and the, and the years that Gibson went to the maple necks and things like that. Yeah, well, and there's nothing wrong with maple necks. No, 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 not at all. Um, originally, uh, he wanted the the edge guitar, kind of the early in the Randy, Randy Rhodes, Rhodes model, you know, which is the early '70s, mid '70s, like '73, '74, mahogany neck originally. Um, so uh, unfortunately, we got one, but it, they had broken that one. So we're looking for a really good white one, and um, I suggested. Oh, yeah, I wanted really wanted it to have this specific age look like this. Yeah, too. sort of the half cream. Yes, not stark white, but you know. Yeah. Um, so I I said, well, you can find. We we kept finding maple neck ones, but I kept saying, well, the maple neck one really isn't tonally the one you probably want because the maple neck does affect the sound quite a bit. Um, so I said, from '82, like early mid '82 to like up till now. They, they went back to mahogany. So um, I said, you know, find a, find a good late 80s, it early It was 90s. hard. Honestly, yeah. it, was, it was really hard. I sent Dave so many <laughs> reverb listings and stuff. Yeah. It yeah. was hard to find one that was in good shape and that, uh, and that was the right color. Yeah, most it, of the time you find them, they're either broke or they're really modified or they're played to death, like all the, you know, all the cream is Or they're in it. Japan. The, now, why yeah. is, I said to Dave, why are there so many white... Gibson Customs, Les Paul Customs in Japan. Why is that, Dave? Well, a few reasons. I mean, they're, uh, they always... <laughs> I mean, originally the 70s ones all went over there, a lot of them, early yeah. on. Before, and actually before they even got uh, high in the market here, they went to Japan. So they, they were buying them up. And all the nice ones, a lot of the nice ones went overseas. Uh, and I know I've sold a few myself overseas to them. <laughs> um, but... Uh, I think the other reason also, uh, obviously, the Randy Rhodes connection, they were huge right. in, in Japan. That's right. And so everybody wanted a white custom. Um, 
and they are hard to find in good shape. I mean, they as, are, as he said. I mean, they're they're tough. Yeah. So um, so he ran across this one, I think, on Reverb. Yeah. And um, it's a 1990. I got lucky. Yeah, it's a 1990. He sent me pics of it, and I said, well, basically, it's all original, um, it, and it's clean. It's not broke. It has the original frets even. Um, and the early, I, I like the like 90 to 93 or four. The neck shape, uh, I really like them. They're kind of medium thin. They're not too ball bat yeah. feeling. Um, and the frets are a little bit bigger than the 70s. The 70s had their little tiny fret wire, which most so, yeah, of them, some of them did. Yeah, yeah, they had the yeah, really frets. small the fretless yeah. wonders, um, which isn't good for bending typically. No. So, um, so the '80s and '90s guitars had the bigger frets. So this one has the regular bigger fret wire. Um, this one has a stock, uh, you know, pickups. They're nothing. It's 498, and, you know, pickups, um, and everything in here stock. Um, and it's a nice weight. Actually, most of the 70s ones were like 10 pounds or more. Right. So they're super heavy. This one, actually, I would say is probably like a 9 pound, 8 and a half, 9 pound, which is, is just about right for a custom. Um, and uh, it's all there. I mean, yeah. said, nothing's been done to it. Um, the knobs yeah. were changed, but that's the only thing that's different. And, and so. they, there's, it had, had really no fret wear or anything on yeah. it when I got it. So this was tough. It's hard to find a guitar that's... 30 years old that doesn't have any fret wear. Yeah, or broken. That, or, and that doesn't yeah. have a broken headstock. Yeah, yeah, that, so it's, you know. It's and that's straight. the right color. And, and how long does it take typically to age to get that cream color, Dave? Um, well, these were really white and new, so I would say, you know, about it depends on where they're played. If they're playing like smoky bars, they turn quicker because of the nicotine. Yeah. But um, so a lot of the ones that were cake, like really mint models are really bright. Um, this one's kind of in the middle. You could tell this one was played, but it wasn't abused. So um, yeah. I don't know, probably five to ten years to get this this patina on it. And it's cool because the binding matches it too. That's like, it like when you see the new ones, the binding's always stark white. That's right. And then the body's cream, and it looks a little strange. Now I'm not one to be to worry about these things about how they look, but honestly, since I make YouTube videos, yeah. Uh, and you just become hyper aware of the color of things and the combinations. I wear a lot of black shirts, so white, a cream guitar yeah. looks good. <laughs> yeah, know. it does, man. It really shows. I mean, I have well. other. Obviously, I have other Les Pauls, but yeah. but if I'm gonna have a Les Paul custom, it's my only custom. I wanted a white custom because I played one in high school. Yeah, and the cool thing I, I like about these two, the '90 ones, they have a good dish top on them. You can kind they of do. see it's a more exaggerated like '50s style dish, which is cool. The '70s were real flat. Yes, they were. Um, so this has got more of a, a neck angle to it, and, and the actions really well. And it's a great guitar. I mean, it's a typical custom. It just does its thing. <laughs> are quite as high as some of my other guitars though they're not they're yeah. in fact they're uh this is probably like yeah the least probably gainy. the least gainy yeah. gainy uh, uh pickups that i yeah, have yeah. and um i'm trying to remember uh, but great for recording yeah. having these having the pickups that are actually not as hot because you can let the amp do the work yeah more. And then plus with the um, ebony fingerboard, you, th these have a tendency to at least when you record them, they're a little brighter. Yeah, sounding. So, um, uh, but it's a great, great guitar and um, very, you know, obviously iconic. It's a great. The white is so cool. Can't go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next we have my Lake Placid uh, Blue Esquire yep. single pickup. It's Telecaster, but with one pickup, so it's an Esquire. Yeah. This actually has a baseball bat neck on it, but it plays great. I do have a couple of baseball bat neck tellies. I have another one that's a, one with a humbucker that's a 70s, a Japanese one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but, custom, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, but this is a really great playing guitar. I've got nines on this. Once again, you guys know that I like blue guitars. This is a little bit different than my signature. That's It's not quite like what a Pelham blue guitar would be, but this is a... It's close. It's close. It's a very light guitar. I'm not sure what the body's made out of. This one is a pine body. Pine so body. So it's um, super light. Um, the neck is a 51D style um, broadcaster uh, tele style neck, early 50s. Uh, seven and a quarter radius, normal fret wire. Uh, the electronics are just a basic 51S, 52 Esquire setup. Uh, so it's got the buffered control at the top. Since it doesn't have a neck pickup, it's got a big cap in there, and it makes it sound real dark. Cool guitar. I really, you know, they're Esquires. It's like it's like having a junior. It's the same thing or a it special. Is. It's it's just. I mean, I like juniors. I like specials. I yeah. like Esquires. Yeah. So that one's that's a, a cool axe. Now this is my Jazz Masters yeah. custom shop. Okay. Yeah. So this one is a '66 
uh, ice blue metallic custom shop fender, custom shop jazz master, uh, blocks, binding, um, and set up just as a normal jazz master would be. Um, great guitar, these are phenomenal. I've had a bunch of vintage ones of these that I, I love, and these are another sleeper guitar for recording. Well, this is like you know. shoegazer guitar. You know, when I yeah. interview Adam Franklin from Swerve Driver, he's always played a jazz master. Yeah. You can't really play shoegaze music unless you have a jazz master. <laughs> you didn't sound true, youth, yes. whatever. It's I mean, true. you gotta. Yes. You know, you have to have the the weird looking pickups. These offset guitars are, are the way to go. Yeah, and these are uh, these are basic, you know, big single calls. That's what they are. So, um, and this guitar is funny enough. It was called a jazz master because Fender. They Leo, wanted people to play, ja play jazz on them. Yeah, Leo was like, I need a jazz guitar. So but they're way better as rock guitars. Yeah, right. <laughs> totally, yeah, so, but, uh, but yeah, they do the... <laughs> cuts through a mix it's yeah. like they got that real sparkly kind of high-end thing and real jangly of course you can clean them up and they're very cool and they look great i mean that's just a great looking guitar man it looks like it's doing 50 miles an hour and it's <laughs> standing still so yeah. um actually and uh, you don't have a jaguar do you i do not okay no. yeah so that'll be the next one <laughs> Okay, lastly, something I don't talk about that much on, on my channel, although I've used bass on, on many videos, um, are my basses. I have four basses that I typically use. I have an Ernie Ball over there, five string. I have a Rickenbacker. And then I have these two Fender basses. This is my Fender Jazz and my Fender P bass. This bass I've had for years and years. I'm not sure what year this is, Dave. Do you know? uh, that is a 2004. 2004. I have had this through a lot of my producing career. It plays incredibly well. Dave has set it up a thousand times. Yep. That neck likes to move on that one. It does. <laughs> it really does. I had the pickups changed out one time, and then I think we changed them back. Yeah. I can't remember why or what, uh, what you happened. Had, you had put EMGs in it at one no, point. No, no, I didn't have EMGs. No, I had some other type of pickup, but it was not EMGs, oh. but I didn't like the sound of them. Okay. You did have a jazz bass with EMGs at one point. Yeah. Long time ago. Yeah, I just love jazz necks. Uh, they're they're just they fit my hand really well. Easy to play down in low register. They're so thin down here. Yeah, this bass is a baseball bat. Has a baseball bat neck. So this is what what is this one, Dave? This is a uh, 2019 62 reissue Lake Placid Blue, um, and it's a standard P bass neck, but it's much wider and and fatter than the the jazz bass neck. That's what he's talking about. Yeah. So. Um, this one I did do some work to. I remember um, I did a lot of nut work on this, and this is another neck that likes to move a lot during the season. So every like six months. Yeah, this really. Adjusted. I've had a lot of adjustments on yeah. both both these bases. Yeah, I've had to have adjusted, but I mean, there's a lot. I think there's probably what more tension on bases. Well, that that yeah, totally. And um, and you you actually have some heavy duty strings on this. These are like one tens. So, yeah, because you tune down a lot with these, so. The, you know, he uses the heavier strings so they don't get too floppy. Which is funny that I use the eights on, on the, on the <laughs> guitar. I use the heavier gauge on the bass. I'm right. not sure how that works. But I think these are. I think this is a hundred on this one, though. I think yeah, that's normal. Lighter. This one's got the one ten, and it's. I can feel it. It's really stiff. Yeah, it's so. that's. Uh, um, those are some serious cables on there. Yeah, and this is a great. I mean, it's a great sound and bass. It's nice and light. Um, yeah. And like I said, of course, the light pass of blue. That's. The Rick Beato approved blue. So I like uh, I like blue. Yeah. But I you know what? I, I do I'm a massive fan of jazz basses that are have uh, um, that are sunburst. I like strats yeah. that are sunburst like this too. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah. I always did. I think it's really cool on this bass and uh, uh, it's classic, man. It yeah. is classic. Yeah, it's, it's a, classic. And I think, um, as far as I remember, um, yeah, these are both stock, except for the, yeah, we did the pickup thing swap one time on that. Um, but everything else is totally, totally straight. I mean, I've thought about changing the bridge and getting maybe a, a badass bridge on it. Yeah, but they sound fine. I mean, yeah. I, they both ring really well, and yeah. I was like, they tune fine, so, you know, don't yeah, mess with them. Don't, don't mess with it. Yeah. Give Dave, don't give Dave more work to do. <laughs> it's not even that. It's just, I don't think it would improve it. 
In fact, the badass sometimes even is more dead than the original base, the, the original bridge. You know. So. so that's the thing with Dave is that if something if something doesn't need to be done, he won't do it. Right. Yeah. I mean, even even I've talked him out of doing things. You know. So he was like, "Well, maybe I should, you know, put this and that or this." And that. I'm like. Why? This sounds so good. You're like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> or you don't need that. Or you don't. Yeah, I mean, I'll just... Cause like some thing. other, some guitar or something. Yeah, you don't need that. Well, and I, I always tell, whether it's him or other friends of mine or anybody that I work for, you know, I'll be the first one to say it's like, uh, you know, I've spent and wasted so much money on so many upgrades for so many things. Some of them are great. Some of them aren't. So if they didn't work, I'll, I'll just tell them. I'll say, hey, I didn't, I didn't have good luck with it. And, you know. So. One of the things, though, that I want to stress with this video and the last one that we did is that. And I'm not saying this to justify having all these instruments, but they really are very different. If you think, even take my four basses, a jazz bass, a P bass, a Rick, and a five-string Ernie Ball. I mean, those could not be any more different in tone. Yeah, they're completely and, different. And the, purp the purpose of using them are so different. Yeah. I mean, a Rick has a very, very unique sound. My Ernie Ball with the active pickups on it, and, the, and it's a five-string. Yeah. You know, so the, the, there's nothing alike, and really, most of these guitars, maybe with the exception of my Gibson, my Les Pauls, although the Les Pauls are pretty different because the custom, as you guys saw, has the pickups are, are very different than any yeah, of the other you ones. Know, there, I, you have maybe one or two guitars that are kind of the similar type thing. But, uh, no, you bought all of these guitars as from a producer standpoint of going, I need something different. And it was so, and anytime we, we, he would ever call me or whatever and say, hey, I'm looking for this. It was always like, yeah, I can understand why, because it's like you don't have that. And know, anything so. I've bought for my channel, like I bought this for a particular video that had to have a P bass. Yeah. And I just didn't, I don't know why I had a P bass before I, I got rid of it. There was something wrong that I just didn't like neck about it. Bad. Yeah, went, neck, my neck went bad. I got rid of it. Yeah. So I bought this one in particular for that. And that's why I bought the blue, because it looks good on camera. Yeah. But um, everything has a reason, or at least I'm trying to justify it. Anyways. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Tell us what guitars you have that are, are repeats that you can get rid of. I'm always curious about that. <laughs> if you have things that are that, that you just keep around and you really don't know why. Yeah. I, I love reading those kind totally, of those man. kind of stories. I love them. I had, I had a friend of mine who said, uh, I've had my first guitar, which is the biggest piece of junk and won't play, but it's the only one I've never sold. And he still has it. I'm like, yeah, I understand. I, I got one too like that. So There you go. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks.